So about a month ago, I saw Paul Thomas Anderson's There Will Be Blood, and I realized that I actually haven't watched any of his other films. So I decided to binge all seven of his other films. I've heard a lot of good things about him before, but I was blown away by how he manages to tell such immersive and human stories without being overly stylized. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I was really excited to check out Inherent Vice at first. I like mysteries, and a mystery directed by a PTA based on a popular book seemed like a no-brainer. But the movie was told in such a confusing way, so that Paul Thomas Anderson could make us feel like we were on drugs, just like the main character. Which he achieves ultimately, but it just makes it so hard to care about the story and characters. It just feels so wooden and emotionless compared to his other films. It's not really the problem that he told it so confusingly, it's just that he told it in such a boring way. It just felt half-baked compared to his other films. There are some good things about the film though. All the actors are great, especially Joaquin Phoenix, and the shots and camera work are absolutely beautiful. All the technical aspects are great, but the story is just too bland and confusing for me to care about it. And PTA's ability to make the audience immersed in his characters and world is one of the best aspects of his films, and this one lacks it. This is PTA's debut film, and it's a great debut at that. It features Philip Baker Hall and John C. Riley's best performances. It also has an interesting environment and tone that bring you into the film immediately. The film doesn't have much of a plot, but the characters and tone keep you engaged throughout the entire story. This is still PTA at the beginning of his career, however. It still kind of feels like he's learning his style of filmmaking, and his trademarks aren't as prevalent in this film. The pacing sort of suffers and slows down in the second act of the film, and some important scenes actually happen off screen for some reason, and the characters just explain it. Which I don't know why he did that, he could have just shown that happening, nothing really changed by it happening off screen. But there was a lot of studio interference in this film. PTA described the experience as a long and painful story, and pretty much fought the studio in every choice. The original title was supposed to be Sydney, and they changed that too. So it's pretty surprising how he managed to create a cohesive film through all the interference. The Master is one of PTA's most matured and well-crafted work. It features Joaquin Phoenix and Philip Seymour Hoffman's best performances, and the best performances in any PTA film. The interview scene on the boat between them is one of my favorite scenes from a PTA film because of its intense dialogue and perfect line delivery. The color palette and lighting are perfect in this film, and it is definitely one of PTA's better looking films. It's a great look at Scientology, but my problems arise with the pacing. The film is kind of boring due to its slow pacing, but it's not as bad as Inherent Vice because there's kind of a reason for it in this film. But there's portions of this film where it actually feels like nothing is happening. Even though I really like this film and I think it's really well made, I can't really put it over the films later in this list because I just didn't enjoy it as much due to the pacing. Boogie Night was one of PTA's more immersive films. He really manages to put you in the 70s and the 80s in this film. This was PTA's breakout film, so this is when his trademarks and filmmaking really started to bloom. He starts using his trademark tracking shots which make the film feel more free and loose. It also has great performances from actors that I really haven't seen great performances from, like Mark Wahlberg and Don Cheadle. They're absolutely amazing in this film. The characters in this movie are also so dynamic and fascinating, and there's a lot of them which really keeps you engaged in the film. Each of them have their own different arc, and they're edited so well together. He goes even farther with this concept in his next film, Magnolia. The arcs also end in such different and unpredictable ways. But my only problem with the film is that it's way too long. It takes way too long for the story to really get going, and the first act just seems way longer than it should have been. After that though, it's a fun ride and the climax is fantastic. I just wish PTA shortened the first act a bit more. 
It's just way too much setup. Magnolia is PTA's three-hour epic that follows the different characters and their interrelated stories. The movie is three hours long, but it goes by so quickly due to its great pacing. It's an emotional roller coaster. It's funny, sad, frustrating, and miserable at the same time. It's crazy even managed to make something like this. It's a great look at forgiveness and ultimately just a study of humanity and how we can be both destructive and forgiving. All the performances are amazing too. Tom Cruise is absolutely fantastic and he has so much range in this movie. He's emotional while also being over the top like his character should be. There's nothing holding it back from being a 5 star movie for me, but I think that I'll enjoy it more and pick up on more details in future rewatches. It's a great look at forgiveness and ultimately just a study of humanity and how we can be both destructive and forgiving. Phantom Thread is PTA's newest film, and fittingly, it might be his most mature and intimate one. It fleshes out the relationship between the two main characters so well, and so patiently, throughout the entire runtime. It's also his best looking film by far. The film has some really pretty shots that make it feel warm and calming. He hides the serious themes under this warm and pretty film, just like the dresses the main character makes. It has Daniel Day-Lewis's supposed last performance, so he really goes all out and disappears into the character in this film. I also love how this film tackles toxic masculinity and how it's so unconventional while never shying away from its main themes. The comedy in this movie is also so subtle and well-timed. It's just so meticulous. It's almost like a psychological thriller slash love story. It's honestly so unique and crazy while also being mature and intimate. It's honestly amazing. I only like these next two a little bit more though. This is still a masterpiece in my eyes. This is a film that really got me into PTA's work, so I had to be pretty high on this list. It's a great depiction of obsession and greed met with flawless cinematography and editing that makes the story flow excellently. The directing is a change of pace from his previous film because the camera movements are more subtle and subdued so you can focus more on the environment and characters. But whenever some action happens or something important in the plot occurs, the editing gets more fast paced and there are more cuts and the camera moves around freely more. It also has two of my favorite performances from Paul Dano and Daniel Day-Lewis. Both of them just disappear into their characters. When these characters clash, it's so intense and you can see the greed and anger coming from their performances. I've seen this movie twice and I've tried to find nitpicks but it's honestly flawless from start to finish. Okay, hear me out. Punch Drunk Love is his best movie, and is also one of my favorite films. It's chaotic while being intimate, it's funny while being important, it's everything a rom-com should be. I just love how this one is just so much more simplistic and less complex than his other films. One of my favorite parts of this film is that it doesn't delve into why these two characters are in love with each other. It just shows love as some sort of magical force. I also think Adam Sandler is at his best in this movie. His angry fit sort of performance is perfect for this character. Emily Watson is also great, and Phil Seymour Hoffman has the funniest performance in this film. BTA also has so much attention to detail in this film. Like the story in this film is told visually most of the time. He uses color and the clothing of his characters to represent what they're feeling. There's also a lot of abstract shots and different color palettes for different locations. The score is also great. The composer, John Bryan, used a lot of interesting instruments. I just have so much fun in this movie while also just appreciating the art and direction behind it. It's also just so rewatchable because you can always find new details about it. 